se pôs Pensei em nós dois Foi a alma que morreu Tudo escureceu St. George's Castle. Castelo de São Jorge in Portuguese is a historic castle in the Portuguese capital of Lisbon, located in the Freguesia of Santa Maria Maior. Human occupation of the castle hill dates to at least the 8th century BC, while the first fortifications built date from the 1st century BC. The hill on which St. George's Castle stands has played an important part in the history of Lisbon, having served as the location of fortifications occupied successively by Phoenicians, Carthaginians, Romans, and Moors before its conquest by the Portuguese in the 1147 Siege of Lisbon. Since the 12th century, the castle has variously served as a royal palace, a military barracks, home of the Torre do Tombo National Archive and now as a national monument and museum. Hi there. Good afternoon. A beautiful, warm, sunny day here in Lisbon in August. As you can see, you can't uh, get inside the castle right there. You can around the corner here. However, I'm not going to go inside the castle. I have visited it before on my first uh, time to Portugal in 2016. And also there's a line and I'm not in the mood for lines. But this is going to be a very, very interesting walk through. A cat with a ultimate napping spot there. So I'm going to walk down through the historic city center here, through these amazing little lanes with the classic cobblestone streets. It is crowded, it is touristy. Here is the line for the castle. Great views from there, inside the castle looking out at Lisbon, but uh, we will be seeing lots of great views and amazing sights in the course of this walk through. I have been in Lisbon for three days. and have been mostly working away, catching up with my videos thanks to super fast Wi-Fi in my room. The fastest Wi-Fi I have ever seen as far as actually paying attention to the uh, speeds. More than 100 megabytes, megabits, excuse me, per second. So I wanted to catch up with things before I head out and see more of Portugal. So the last time that I was here, six years ago, I only saw Lisbon. Sintra did a walk over to the westernmost point of Europe from Sintra. You're in all interesting uh, kind of hidden away there. All right, going to uh, head through here. I walked up this way.
And so that was basically all that I saw of Portugal on that previous trip. And then took a bus to Spain. So I'm not sure where I'm going to go on this trip because uh, nothing is planned yet, no reservations for accommodation, and accommodation is going to be a problem. Yeah. Middle of August, peak season, oh, yeah, cute. there is very little left, and it is expensive. So why come here then in peak season? When it is crowded and expensive and hot? Well, that is the case pretty much everywhere right now, at least in this very general part of the world. It's kind of a uh, pick your crowd situation. That is actually why I left the Greek islands. because anywhere vaguely near a beach is going to be just packed right now. And so I'm hoping to do some exploring inland in Portugal and hopefully find some less crowded spots, but uh, we'll see. So as you can see, a super interesting scene here with all of the historic buildings, the rickshaws, the streetcars. And great views. the Tagus River, longest river in the Iberian Peninsula. Iberia is Spain and Portugal. So Lisbon is basically on the coast, but that is not the Atlantic Ocean, that is the river flowing into the Atlantic. Saint Vicente. St. Vincent's. Let's look at the views from over here at this super crowded spot. Lots of cool hats. I stick with the baseball caps because they are more travel friendly. 20. No, no, no. Easier to no money. stuff into, you know, my backpack here or wherever without damaging them. Just kind of more durable than fully brimmed like straw hats or whatever. <laughs> Okay, let's keep the uh, tour going. I'm going to end this video at the same place where I ended the last one. The main square 
down by the water. I wanted to make this video walking down because it is steep hills so you don't have to listen to me huffing and puffing walking up the hills. The streetcar tracks. Hopefully we'll see some more streetcars. They're super cute. As are these things. Communication breakdown. Here's one. Let's get a good shot of it. Must be an important tree. Very bulbous. Not your typical tree trunk, that's for sure. So, in Portugal, of course, they speak Portuguese. Portuguese and Spanish are certainly related, but also very different. If you speak Spanish, you cannot come here and talk with people or understand very much. A lot of the words are similar yet different and a lot of the words are just different. The only things that I can say in Portuguese is hello and thank you. Hello is hola. So just the same as Spanish, however, spelled differently. There's no H, so just O-L-A, hola. Thank you, is obrigado. And of course, that sounds nothing like, in Spanish, gracias. However, it does sound a little similar to like, obligated or obligation. So I wonder if there's a connection Perhaps it is a romance-based language. So there will be some similarities to English. And of course, Spanish-Italian. So pardon my uh, lack of relevant historical information. This video is not intended to be a proper tour of the city. As I said, I was busy uh, editing. Over the past several days, I edited one video this morning. It is processing right now. I will watch it through when I get back to my room and then edit another video. And so the uh, sort of main mission is to 
get caught up with the editing. And yet, give you guys a little taste of the city here before I take off. But uh, obviously, this must be the uh, main cathedral. Basilica de Santa Maria Mayor. Cathedral, 12th century. What's 12th century? Okay, let's uh, go for it. Change shirts to go inside the church. So, getting close to the Main Square. Amazing sights here in Lisbon. A lot of really nice squares. One little, you know, tiny one there, but uh, lots of squares throughout the city, lots of parks, lots of restaurants, street side cafes. So I had lunch right before walking up the hill. And uh, didn't end up filming it, but it was really good. It was at a Latin restaurant called uh, Cochina Latina. Or is it Cocina Latina? In Spanish, then. One means kitchen and one means nasty. Cocina and cochina. And I forget which is which, but uh, anyways, it was Latin kitchen.
And so I had like these uh, open-faced sandwiches with arugula, you know, the green lettucey stuff, salmon, and an egg on top of each one, two of them. And I think some sauce and maybe tomatoes. And then a uh, beef burrito bowl. It was like shredded beef, rice, avocado, chips, and uh, pico de gallo. So basically like a Mexican restaurant, but maybe general like fusion Latin food or something. It was uh, 24 euros, including a bottle of water. Not especially cheap, but it was right in the middle of the historical center here in the main uh, tourist area. And so here we have the main square of Lisbon on the Tagus River. Look at this. Absolutely incredible sight. And the rest of the historical part of the city going all out through there. My other video that I recorded yesterday was filmed back out uh, that way up the hills. So you basically have like this kind of a valley right here and the uh, city center and then the hills, the castle is up there and then more hills up there and I'm staying in a hotel that's quite a long ways away, like two kilometers but a really interesting walk. One of the most magnificent squares in the world here. All right, let's get uh, one last view of the Tagus. Splitting Portugal in half, heading that way, south towards the Algarve, with all of the best beaches. I've never been there. On my last trip to Portugal, I took a bus from Lisbon to Faro in the south changed buses there and then had an hour to walk around and then headed into Spain. But that is where you would access the Algarve. Down on the Atlantic, merging into the Mediterranean. Parece nem um pouco com que a gente 
que sente Se foi uma ilusão Porque sou 